I want to take a look at one more application for coding in data science that's called JASP. This is a new application, not very familiar to a lot of people, and still in beta, but with amazing promise. You can basically think of it as a free version of SPSS, and you know what? We love free. But JASP is not just free, it's also open source, and it's intuitive, and it makes analyses replicable, and it even includes Bayesian approaches. And so take that all together, you know, we're pretty happy and we're jumping for joy. So before we move on, you just may be asking yourself, you know, JASP, what is that? Well, the uh, creators emphatically deny that it stands for just another statistics program, but be that as it may, we'll just go ahead and call it JASP and use it very happily. You can get to it by going to JASP dash stats.org. And let's take a look at that right now. JASP is a new program, they say a low fat alternative to SPSS, but it is a really wonderful, great way of doing statistics, you're going to want to download it, specifying your platform, it even comes in Linux format, which is beautiful. And again, it's beta. So stay posted, things are updating regularly. And if you're on Mac, you're going to need to use X quartz, but that's an easy thing to install. It makes a lot of things work better. And it's a wonderful way to do analyses. When you open up JASP, it's going to look like this. It's a pretty blank interface, but it's really easy to get going with it. So for instance, you can come over here to file, and you can even choose some example data sets. So for instance, here's one called big five, that's personality factors. And you've got data here that's really easy to work with. Let me scroll this over here for a moment. So there's our five variables. And let's do some quick analyses with these. Say, for instance, we want to get descriptives. We can pick a few variables. Now, if you're familiar with SPSS, the layout feels very much the same. And the output looks a lot the same. You know, all I have to do is select what I want, and it immediately pops up over here. And then I can choose additional statistics, I can get quartiles, I can get the median. And you can choose plots, let's get some plots, all I do is click on it, and they show up. And that's a really beautiful thing. And you can modify these things a little bit. So for instance, I can take the plots and let's see if I can drag that down. And if I make it small enough, I can see the five plots. Well, I went a little too far on that one. Anyhow, you can do a lot of things here, and I can hide this, I can collapse that. And I can go on and do other analyses. Now what's really neat, though, is when you navigate away from it, so I just clicked in a blank area of the results pane, we're back to the data here. But if I click on one of these tables like this one right here, it immediately brings up the commands that produced it and I can just modify it some more if I want say I want skewness and kurtosis. Boom, they're in there. It's an amazing thing. And then I can come back out here, I can click away from that. And I can come down to the plots expand those. And if I click on that, it brings up the commands that made them. It's an amazingly easy and intuitive way to do things. Now, there's another really nice thing about JASP. And that is that you can share the information online really well through a program called osf.io. That stands for the Open Science Foundation. That's its web address, osf.io. So let's take a quick look at what that's like. Here's the Open Science Framework website, and it's a wonderful service, it's free, and it's designed to support open, transparent, accessible, accountable, collaborative research. And I really can't say enough nice things about it. What's neat about this is once you sign up for OSF, you can create your own area, and I've got one of my own, I'll go to that right now. So for instance, here's the data lab page in Open Science Framework. And what I've done is I created a version of this JASP analysis. And I've saved it here. In fact, let's open up my JASP analysis in JASP, and then I'll show you what it looks like in OSF. So let's first go back to JASP. And when we're here, we can come over to file and click computer. And I just saved this file to the desktop. Click on desktop. 
and you should have been able to download this with all the other files. DSO324 JASP. I'm going to double click on that to open it. And now it's going to open up a new window. And you see, I was working with the same data set, but I did a lot more analyses. I've got these graphs. I have correlation scatter plots. Come down here. I did a linear regression. And we just click on that, and you can see the commands that produced it, as well as the options. Didn't do anything special for that, but I did do some confidence intervals and specified that. And it's really a great way to work with all this. I'll click back in an empty area, and you can see the commands go away. And so I've got my output here in JASP. When I saved it, though, I had the option of saving it to OSF. In fact, if you go to this web page, osf.io slash 3t2jg, you'll actually be able to go to a page where you can see and download the analysis that I conducted. Let's take a look. This is that page. There's the address I just barely gave you. And what you see here is the same analysis that I conducted. It's all right here. So if you're collaborating with people, or if you want to show things to people, this is a wonderful way to do it. Everything's right there. Now this is a static image, but up at the top, people have the option of downloading the original file and working with it on their own. So in case you can't tell, I'm really enthusiastic about JASP and about its potential. Still in beta, still growing rapidly. I see it really as an open source, free and collaborative replacement to SPSS. And I think it's going to make data science work so much easier for so many people. I strongly recommend you give JASP a close look.